Immensely powerful and highly intelligent. An animal that embodies the savagery and danger of the wilderness. And every year, they take human life. Yet deep in the Alaskan interior, there is one man who is trying to prove that man and bear can live alongside each other in harmony. For almost 20 years, Charlie Vandergaard has secretly built a unique relationship with both black and grizzly bears. But last year, he became a media sensation as his story was leaked to the world's press. Now for the first time, Charlie has allowed his highly controversial and extremely dangerous work to be filmed. They're such a big, powerful animal. They can break my neck with one slap. Oh. <laughs> How's he feel when you're doing that? Scared. This film asks what drives Charlie to choose a life in the wilderness and whether he can prove that man can successfully live alongside wild bears. The vast Alaskan landscape is home to some of the last remaining wildernesses on Earth. It covers an area 13 times as big as the United Kingdom with a population of just over 600,000, leaving huge swathes of its enormous interior largely untouched by humanity. For people like Charlie who do venture into the wilderness, they are able to live out their dreams of the last frontier, far away from modern society. That's what I like about Alaska, because I can live like I want to live. Fish or hunt or... You don't have to answer to anyone out here. You're not c controlled by other people. It's here, 70 miles from the nearest road, that Charlie chose to build a cabin and make a life alongside the wild bears of Alaska. It's the beginning of spring. Every year for the last two decades, Charlie has eagerly waited for the harsh Alaskan winter to recede so he can return to the cabin. All is just to kind of protect the windows from the bears. They like to rear up on them. See, all of this mud is from their feet. Charlie built his cabin himself. 20 years ago, and over the years, the cabin has come to be known as Bear Haven. Charlie's cabin is so remote, he has no means of communicating with the outside world. If something goes wrong, he is on his own. But such remoteness offers a rare chance to observe and study wild bears. And it isn't long before the first one drifts in from the surrounding forest. Charlie allows the wild 500 pound black bear to come straight into the cabin. Well, it's been coming for six years. First time he came in his cabin, he was about this long. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come here. Come here. Oh, oh, oh. 
Oh, get down. <laughs> get down. Get down. Come on. Come here. Come here. Get back. Get out. Go on. Go on. Quit. <laughs> Will it get to a point with the bear like Walt where you just think he can't come in the house? Or? It just depends on how he behaves. If I can control him in here and keep him from tearing things up, then I'll let him in. He's He's been in here for years. <laughs> Within a matter of hours, Charlie's cabin is surrounded by wild bears. They think they're ready for breakfast, so I'd better go feed them. Charlie believes that by feeding the bears, he can make them less threatening to humans. This is a highly controversial theory. Conventional thinking suggests that the bears become far more dangerous once they learn to associate humans with food. But this doesn't worry Charlie, and he walks straight out into a large group of hungry bears, armed only with a stick. Come on. Come on. As well as the black bear surrounding Charlie's cabin, there are two large brown bears more commonly known as grizzlies. One of them is a mother with two cubs, generally regarded as the most dangerous bear of all as she'll do anything to protect her offspring. Bears tend to lead solitary lives in the wilderness and aren't used to being in such close proximity to each other. All it takes is for one bear to get too close to her cubs and the mother grizzly attacks. seem to recognize Charlie, the filmmaker and the alien shape of his camera, is something new. Many believe it is just a matter of time before something terrible happens to Charlie, but he is adamant his years of experience can prevent an attack. Just to see someone get that close to the grizzlies and the black bears and all the confusion. No seem insane but it's like taking something out of context I mean you have to see the whole thing you have to understand the number of years of experience Charlie wasn't always this comfortable around bears when he moved to Alaska from his native Oregon Charlie became a teacher. Surprisingly, in his spare time, he was a keen hunting enthusiast. I spent a, a lot of time hunting bears. And every time I saw a bear, it was just a little bit more exciting than the time before. I think a lot of the mystique of bear hunting is that you're you're hunting a huge, dangerous predator. But the more I was around bears, the more I realized that there was something there besides just, quote, vicious, wild animal. When Charlie began building his cabin over two decades ago, he started getting regular visits from wild black bears. Like most people, his initial reaction was one of fear. I got up one morning and went outside 
and there was a bear standing there looking at me. The longer he stood there, the more frightened I became. I finally uh, picked up a stick and threw it at him and ran him off. But slowly, Charlie's fear turned into a fascination. I just started noticing that more and more black bears were coming out of the forest and just uh, watching me. And Charlie watched back, filming the curious bears on a small camera. It was a large male black bear that made the first approach. Every time that he approached me, he drug himself on his belly. And then, Charlie did something incredible. One day I decided that I would be fair about the whole thing, and I got down and drug myself to him. And first things that touched were our noses. Charlie's remarkable leap of faith with that one black bear gave him the confidence to try forging a relationship with the larger and more dangerous grizzly bears. I think I'm mesmerized by grizzly bears. I, I love the black bears. But there's just something about a grizzly bear that is hypnotic to me. Like the black bears, there was one grizzly that Charlie felt able to bond with. She was the first grizzly that I ever made friends with. It was all on her terms. She was the cutest grizzly I ever saw. And her brother was the most beautiful. He was almost white. She just was very timid at first, but then I could tell that she was lonely. And she just, she just liked the play. He'd come in and just play with the irrigation system and not feed her. She eventually let me feed her out of my hand. Over time, the bears became Charlie's companions, fending off the loneliness of living in the wilderness. Now, almost 20 years after those first encounters, Charlie is comfortable in the presence of large groups of bears. And his passion for the grizzlies is as strong as ever. Charlie is particularly fond of a five-year-old female grizzly called Cookie. He believes that she represents his best chance of bridging the gap between man and grizzly. This bear is uh, very important to me. I've, I've known her ever since she was a cub. And uh, I'm looking forward to her bringing her cubs in here. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be uh, just fantastic to have a mother grizzly that you really don't have to be afraid of. Statistically, grizzlies are far more dangerous than black bears. They are responsible for an overwhelming majority of all bear attacks on man. Cookie is by far the biggest and strongest bear of the group and dominates the black bears.
Her mood seems unpredictable, but Charlie is confident she won't attack him. Let her come right past you. She's not going to do anything. She's put off by the camera. Try to just make yourself just walk right past them like they were a Labrador. <laughs> One of the key things Charlie relies on to determine the bear's intentions are the noises they make. Come. You've got to listen constantly. After a while you find out that certain vocalizations uh, demand more attention than others. Uh, roaring. What the grizzlies do, that's just bear talk. They're just yelling at each other. <laughs> You're just getting, you know, more and more comfortable being in the presence of them. You'll soon learn to sort it out so that you don't think that it's an aggression move. Charlie's patient work, trying to habituate the bears, is highly controversial. Feeding bears is illegal in Alaska, and Charlie has been warned by the local authorities to stop. Regardless of his success, many in Alaska think he is an accident waiting to happen. The unpredictability of bears was reinforced just as we started to make this film, when the black bear dragged an 11-year-old from his tent and mauled him to death. An 11-year-old boy was mauled and killed by a black bear as he slept in a tent. The boy's body was discovered 400 yards from his family's campsite. And unfortunately, it, this event happened before we could get to the bear. State and federal wildlife officers and dozens of dogs ran the area and hunt for the bear. And bear experts themselves are not immune from the dangers. In the past few years alone, three of the world's most experienced bear specialists have been killed by grizzlies. State troopers release new information tonight in a videotape related By far the, the most infamous bear killing is that of Timothy Treadwell. If um, there's lots of bears out here, I root for them. I sing to them and tell them, hey, good, good job getting that clam. And, and... After successfully managing to camp amongst large groups of grizzlies for 13 summers, Treadwell and his girlfriend were brutally killed and eaten by a grizzly bear. Charlie doesn't like comparisons with Treadwell and strongly believes that what he is doing is different. I do not consider what I do to be even remotely similar to what Timothy Treadwell did. I have tried hard not to invade the bear's space. They, uh, they're coming in here and entering my space. Charlie feels that his techniques aren't so different from the bear experts who are so quick to condemn him. The biologists that do get up to him do exactly the same thing I do. They habituate him. The only difference is, they're bear experts. I'm just a retired school teacher. Bear biologist Sean Farley is responsible for trying to minimize conflict between humans and bears in the Anchorage area. So you can see we've got lots of development going up into the hills. Can you see the little bit of green that's pretty much right off our left wing? The bears drop down through that and hit the highway. And then there's a single creek up there that they cross underneath the highway and then go up the mountains up through there. So 27231, Mount Tower. 
but I put GPS collars on the bears so you have a pretty good location of where they travel um, every 15 to 30 minutes and so I can watch these animals over time as they travel up into the backyards of the people, walk down the power line corridors and hit the streams and go fishing. Sean believes that although a bear hasn't seriously harmed Charlie yet, an attack could still happen. It's kind of interesting, the people that work with bears, like we, we all get real complacent. That's just, that's human nature. I wouldn't doubt he's been bit and scratched. I'd be stunned if he hadn't been. If you play with fire, you're going to get burned eventually. Although Charlie is confident that he won't end up like Treadwell, the bears he has befriended are still extremely unpredictable. <laughs> Whilst we were filming with Sean Farley in Anchorage, Charlie was attacked by Cookie, the female grizzly he has tried so hard to befriend. He just nailed me. Grabbed me by the hand and yanked me off my feet. <laughs> the attack has rattled Charlie, and he blames himself. I, I took the bears out to feed them and uh, got lazy and didn't disperse them. Fed them all in a big pile. I thought I'd sit with the, with the grizzly and she just nailed me. Grabbed me by the hand and yanked me off my feet. That was the end of the fun. I'm lucky that she didn't ruin my hand. It's by far the worst bite I've ever gotten. They stitched it up inside and then closed it on the outside. The tusk wound went down through here and came out here. And they put one stitch in here and then just left the rest of it open. That's right, just don't abandon your, your camera, but just... Uh... Despite the potentially devastating attack, Charlie still wants to spend time with Cookie. She knows she can boss me around by coming up and biting at me. I'm trying not to let... what happened, you know, color my attitude towards her. But it's hard. Charlie's attempts to get closer to Cookie are thwarted as she leaves soon after attacking him. And he has no way of knowing if he'll ever see her again. Cookie's attack and sudden disappearance force Charlie to think about the inherent dangers of the solitary life he's chosen. As the years have gone on, he has found himself wanting to spend more time on his own at the cabin, working with the bears. But occasionally, when supplies run low, Charlie's forced to return to Alaska's biggest city, Anchorage, and the life he leaves behind for six months every year. enough to be able to build a place where it's where I can have all the solitude I want. So if I want some of the modern world I'll go to town. For a man who's used to spending more time with bears than people, a trip into town comes as a culture shock. I kind of 
get out of touch with reality. I lose track of what's going on in the world. But you can always get a newspaper and a news magazine. It gets more depressing every year that I get older. I see what a mess the world is in. Whilst in town, Charlie returns to his anchorage home to see his wife of 40 years, who he's apart from for six months of the year. Sometimes it would be nice to have him home doing honeydew things, but we get it done. <laughs> Some years are worse than others, you know, if we're being separated, but... What do they say? Absence makes the heart grow fonder. <laughs> I guess that's about what you have to look at it because that's just the way it's going to be for a while. What else can you do? I mean, I, I think you could ruin your life and his if you just fretted at him all the time. I guess it must, it must be a bit of a strain on the relationship. He's spending so much time in the cabin. Yes, it does. Two days later, Charlie is back at Bear Haven and is eager to see the bears he has befriended. He spots a female bear he has named Annie, who has recently had her first cub. But Annie is reluctant to bring the cub near the cabin. So Charlie decides to follow them into the forest. He's curious to see how they live away from the cabin, but the dense forest is a potentially dangerous place. You know, I, I like to sneak around and see what I can see. And um, that could get you in trouble if you run into a female grizzly. In the wild, Mother bears are alert to potential threats. Male bears will kill cubs to breed with the mother. But Charlie also thinks the cub, even at this early stage, is highly sensitive to any dangers. I've come to believe that the cubs are every bit as aware as the mother. Um. It'll be the first one to uh, bolt. It is difficult to track down Annie and her cub, but Charlie knows the area so well that eventually he finds them. I think I just spotted me a bear. Charlie somehow has to reassure Annie he is not a threat to her cub. I think I'll be able to get by with just doing whatever I want to with the cub as long as I don't get it to cry or something that would, you know, make her think I was hurting the cub. And then I don't know what she would do. I've never been in that position. Annie doesn't seem too worried about Charlie. It's as if she knows there's something potentially more dangerous nearby. She's constantly looking for danger, smelling what's on the air. This little, this little cub is a master at self-protection. She's using her nose all the time and her ears. Come, come, come. Oh, something's put them off. Come on. A large male black bear appears from out of the forest. As it gets closer, Charlie recognizes Walt, the bear he let in the cabin at the beginning of the summer.
Nah, don't bite me. Don't bite. Don't bite. Don't. Get back. Get back. So Annie would have smelt her. Yep. Oh, she undoubtedly heard him coming to quit it. Would you come out here? Spoil our fun. She constantly has to be aware of these other bears. They do present a danger to that cub. There's the cub in this tree right here. Because the large male bear, Walt, may still be nearby, Annie has taken the cub, Peanut, to a tree known as a nanny tree. Sometimes these will be the same trees that mother bears were left in when they were cubs. Now that sort of cub wants to be is right by a tree that she can climb quickly. Whilst the mother bear stands guard, Charlie is able to move in and play with the cub. I think all the signals he, that Annie's given to Peanut is that it's okay. For Charlie, it is an amazing experience. In all his years of trying to befriend the bears, Charlie's never got so close to a cub in such a short space of time. That's one of the greatest moments I've ever had with a cub. It's exciting to have an animal like that that you can look forward to playing with and becoming friends with. <laughs> with the harsh Alaskan winter looming, the bears have to focus on getting enough calories to survive their long hibernation. To help them, their bodies move into a phase called hyperphagia, meaning they are never full. And nature helps too, providing them with a rich crop of sugar-laden berries. After spending all summer near the cabin, the black bears are so used to Charlie that they allow him to follow them to a berry-picking site. I get the impression these bears like to watch me pick berries. I try to feed them every now and then and sometimes they'll eat berries and other times they just satisfied to hang around. Charlie hopes that his relationship with the black bears will go some way to changing people's minds about their supposedly vicious nature. Oh, that's getting them the easy way. You're supposed to get your own. I think given a chance, bears easily get used to people. Um, that's their, one of their weaknesses, probably more dangerous for the bear than it is for the human. Whilst Charlie appears to have successfully proved he can live alongside the black bears, he still wants to prove the same as possible with wild grizzly bears. Over the years, he's befriended a lot of grizzlies, but they were all young bears. As they grow up, they seem to become wilder and are less receptive to Charlie.
this summer, Charlie has tried befriending a large female he's called Cookie, but he hasn't seen her since she attacked him. As his season starts to draw to a close, he gets another chance to finally bond with the adult grizzly. Cookie just came in. She hasn't been here for three weeks. But as he approaches her, something seems wrong. I'm a little bit scared of her. Winter begins to take a hold in Alaska. After four months at the cabin, Charlie has reached the end of his season, and the bears will soon enter hibernation for the long winter ahead. It was around this time of year when Timothy Treadwell and his girlfriend were killed by a grizzly. Many observers have compared Charlie to Treadwell and labeled him as a dangerous obsessive, but Charlie has found a purpose living alongside the bears. I think that's what most people try to do is something that turns them on, get away from the everyday humdrum of our existence. I've just taken it over the edge. I find this to be exhilarating. Where others see a dangerous beast, Charlie sees a beautiful and highly intelligent animal. I've, I've never felt that bears were mindless. I think they're far more intelligent than most people give them credit for. No. 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 Sometimes I even forget they're bears. No. If he, if he wanted to attack me, I wouldn't stand a chance. But he doesn't want to. It's Charlie's last night at the cabin, and Cookie, the large female grizzly who attacked him earlier in the summer, returns. For Charlie, it is a chance to say goodbye before she hibernates. Cookie just came in. She hasn't been here for three weeks. Looks like she's got something wrong with her nose. I'll go up here and see if we can't get a, a look at her. Come on, sweetheart. But as Charlie approaches Cookie, he senses her unease and backs away. Want something? Come on. Come on. She doesn't look that happy. I'm going to leave her alone. Cookie doesn't respond to Charlie, forcing him to admit that he may never befriend an adult grizzly. She's kind of hard to read. When I was up close to her, she wouldn't even look at me. And I tried to feed her and she absolutely didn't want it. I think she's turned into a grizzly bear. I'm a little bit scared of her. And that's the way I should be, I guess. Charlie still plans to continue working with the bears next year. And though he appears to have successfully proved he can habituate the black bears, during his final feeding session, he gets a reminder of just how dangerous and unpredictable the bears can be when he gets on the wrong side of an aggressive young male. What are you trying to do? 
Well, I'm just keeping him away from her food, but I think she's going to give it up to him. Now, don't be getting mad at me. Oh, quit it. Get away. As shocking as this on, looks, buddy. it is by no means an all-out attack. Charlie remains philosophical. After we have a little face-off, then I try to be nice to him and feed him. It wasn't his fault. He figures he's bigger than that bear. He can take her food. He didn't like me getting in his way. Charlie's way of life may seem fraught with danger, but it is what makes him feel alive. The bears are his friends and have become a part of who he is. It's going to take an awful lot for me not to want to come out here. It's too beautiful, it's too peaceful. I know that I want to be around the wild animals. There's something terribly exciting about it. I no longer have any desire to kill I think I'll spend the rest of my life nurturing bears. They have a way of looking at me that makes me wonder if all men couldn't get along with bears. If I could just have a chance to spend some time with them. This is what I am now.